So there's something known as Moore's Law. In 1965, a, a person named Gordon Moore, he was the co-founder of Intel. You've probably heard of them, <laughs> Intel microchips, I'm sure. And he observed that the number of transistors on a microchip doubled approximately every two years while the cost of the computers halved. So we doubled the production of the chip, doubled the transistors, but reduced the cost in half. So what this basically means is that technology gets faster and it gets cheaper over time. And this is, this is how true. It's been over 50 years, and this is what's been happening. So we have this exponential growth because it doubles. So you go from 1 to 2, but then you go from 2 to 4, and from 4 to 8, and from 8 to 16, 16 to 32, and then from 60, 32 to 64, and like it starts doubling. And those last couple doubles get really, really, really big as it starts getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. It allows things to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Think about like, you know, in the 60s when they launched the space shuttle, uh, NASA had, you know, entire buildings that were a big computer. And today the iPhone is more powerful than that entire building of a computer at the time. So it gets bigger. It gets, uh, I'm sorry, it gets better, faster, more powerful. It gets cheaper and it gets smaller at the same time. So that's what's happening. Um, and like I said, today we have a few new technologies. I believe this next technological revolution. And I think those are artificial intelligence and, uh, and, and really Bitcoin, decentralized ledger technology. So we have artificial intelligence, which is um, really it's a sort of a subset or maybe a continuation of what we've been doing for a while, which is machine learning, where machines can learn and then they can improve upon themselves. So we're starting to see that. We're starting to see a lot of potential use cases and really disruptive use cases that are happening. Um, look no further. I mean, I'm in Southern California. Look no further than up the road from me in, in Hollywood. And we have uh, actors on strike. We're going to talk about that in a second. But we can see, you know, um, these algorithms, we have these social media platforms that recommend content we should watch, Netflix movies we should watch, YouTube videos we should watch. And that's sort of like a machine learning. It's an algorithm that learns what I like and it serves those things up to me. Um, of course, like I said, Bitcoin is now a, a new way for us to send value over time and space that's not controlled by a central entity. So now I can move packets of value Bitcoin, like money, and it can be sent from me to you peer to peer without going through a YouTube or a Google or a Facebook or something like that. Um, that is very disruptive as well. And so these are things that are changing. These are these are the things that are upon us right now. Now, like I said, there's always potential dangers, or at least there's always perceived potential dangers because we're scared of what this new technology could do. We're scared of what this new technology is replacing. And people are scared because their jobs are in danger. And they're going to have to learn to do something new. So, for example, in the Industrial Revolution, before the Industrial Revolution in the late 1700s, everybody worked on farms and in like a cottage industry. Now, when the machines were made, a machine could do the work of 5,000 men. But what would those 5,000 men do? Well, turns out things like science and medicine, higher value tasks. I've been going down to uh, Mexico and Central America for, for many, many decades down there surfing. they got great waves, and I love the food and the people. And uh, I've been on Nicaragua a couple times. Nicaragua is very, very poor. You still have people getting around on, like, oxen and carts and stuff like that down there. And um, where I like to go is about a three-hour drive from the airport where you fly in. And every time I go back, like, they're still working on this same road. And it's, like, years in between, right? Like, they're still working. And, like, they're literally, like, um, putting, like, uh, brick by brick by brick on there. Um, like, like, hand pavers, right? And I asked the guy. I'm, like, the guy that was driving me back and forth. And I'm, like, can't they just get, like, a tractor in here and just, like, grade this whole thing and pave it? And he said, yeah, but then what are all these people going to do? You see... It's always the same thing that we hear all the time. Uh, so we have the Luddites who are afraid of being replaced. But then we also have the fear mongers worried about uh, what this could do. Now, of course, uh, part of it also stems, at least, you know, part of my concerns today are not so much afraid of the technology, but really my fears revolve around who controls the technology and uses the technology against us. So... I want the 
uh, convenience. I want the benefit of the technology. I grew up as a kid watching like the cartoon, the Jetsons and they lived in space and they had a robot that would clean the house and they could talk to their house and it would do everything for them. Like, I want that. Like, uh, what was it? An iron man. He had like Jarvis. Like I want Jarvis. I want to talk to my house and have it do everything for me. Hey, start my coffee, shut the blinds, turn the TV on. Like I want that. What I don't want is, is Amazon Alexa to do it for me because Amazon listens to all my conversations and steals my data and weaponizes it against me. So I want the technology. I want the convenience of the technology, the benefit of it. I don't want it used against me. But unfortunately, that's the, that's the battle that I see. Now, some of this we can see, again, going back to these movies, show us where this inevitably goes. Uh, one of the you know most famous books and examples of this is George Orwell's 1984, which was written... I don't know, what is that, uh, 70, 80 years ago, before any of this technology was there. However, if you go read it today, it's like, this is what happened. I was uh, flying last week, and the guy sitting behind me had the book. And I was like, oh, it's a great book, isn't it? He's like, oh, yeah, it's scary. I said, I know. It was not meant to be an instruction manual. It was meant to be a warning. But yet it seems like it was an instruction manual. They've done that exactly. And some of the things they talked about in the book are the things that we have today, such as facial recognition, data mining tools, um, and basically what China's done. <laughs> China has created a surveillance state using a network of surveillance cameras everywhere, facial rec recognition technology, um, data collection, and our own U.S. companies are in, uh, on board with that. You know, Google, Facebook do the same thing. I just flew in from Spain a week ago, and uh, when I went through customs, I'm a, I'm, I'm a frequent traveler, so I have uh, global entry. So that means I'm in a database and I'm approved, that which means I get through the border faster because I've taken the time to go through this extra screening. Um, and when I went through global entry, I didn't even have to pull my passport out. As I walked through the line, it just grabbed my face and approved me and allowed me to go through. It was uh, pretty interesting. But this is the technology that is, was talked about in 1984. It's being used, it's being weaponized against people in China, and we're having it today. Um, in the movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise, um, there was a lot of things in that movie that have come to pass, uh, specifically uh, retinal scanning, which we see all over the news today with this world coin. We'll talk more about that later. But they had something called pre-crime. And basically the premise of that movie was that we were going to try to catch people before they did the crime so that they didn't, they didn't do the crime. Problem is in the United States, we have something called a rule of law, this, this very pesky rule of law, and that is that you're innocent until proven guilty. So just because you potentially might, could, maybe one day potentially do something criminally doesn't mean you are a criminal today. But the premise of that movie is that we could catch them before they did that. But now we see that. Now we see predictive policing software like PredPol. It uses historical crime data to predict where crimes are likely to occur. Right? Uh, it raises, raises all types of ethical concerns, but yet we're seeing it. We're seeing it being used in L.A. for par parking tickets. Um, we're seeing it being used for predicting driving patterns. Um, you know, recently in New York, they managed to identify and apprehend a drug trafficker seemingly by magic. But it wasn't magic. Instead, it was through AI and surveillance, and uh, they were able to find him and, and apprehend him. So um, we're seeing this uh, case after case after case of it being used against us. Of course, like I said, China social credit score system is the biggest case of that yet. But I want to talk about where this is going. I want to talk about some of the policies that are being put into place that I think are very, very dangerous, specifically uh, dangerous because of um, like being a Luddite, preventing this progress from happening that we need it. 